Hey guys, we're excited to get started with a new mini-series. This week we're going to be talking about sharing Jesus and what that looks like, right? Talking about this bigger topic of witnessing and sharing our faith with other people. I was really blessed and encouraged with our mini-series that we went through on prayer. And um, I know for me there were some eye-opening moments as I was just able to kind of think through a lot of those different things. And I hope for you as well, you've kind of set your heart to resolve to be a person of prayer. And that hopefully in these weeks that are to come, and as we're continuing in this quarantine time, uh, that we'll just find more of Jesus. We'll, we'll just have deeper roots, a deeper relationship with him when we come out the other side. Because we've chosen to pray, we've chosen to enter into relationship and intimacy with God through prayer. Uh, so this week we're going to be starting um, a new series called Witnessing, uh, called Sharing Jesus. And we're going to be looking at witnessing in a world that has countless options. And so... Um, this week, I just want to start with the foundation. I want to look at really why and start at the, at the ground level. But then we want to look at some of the hesitations that we have uh, while we're witnessing or why we may not witness to other people. And then we want to conclude with some ways that we can go practically about actually now going and sharing the good news of Jesus. Um, but again, I, I want to start this series off by kind of painting uh, the picture of why we're even doing this, why we're spending these weeks in uh, witnessing what it looks like to even share this life that we have with Jesus. Um, we really want to start here with the foundation so that our hearts are stirred, so that we really have a deeper desire to see Jesus made known in our lives. And not just in our personal lives, but in the lives of those that are around us. Um, and so, we don't want these weeks, again, just to be an intellectual ascent, like you came out with some Bible verses that can help back up why we should be witnessing. Our, our prayer is that when we walk out of these moments, that we are resolved to go and share the good news of Jesus. Now, that's nothing I'm going to say that's going to spark you to do that. But I'm praying right now, the Holy Spirit will just meet you where you're at and just kind of give you that, that mind that you say, I want people to come to know Jesus. There's a question that I asked on the little survey that you guys filled out. And it was, how would you feel if, if someone said yes to a relationship with Jesus due to the witnessing that you did? Due to your sharing Jesus with them. And everyone was like, awesome, ecstatic. I would, I would just be so blessed. It, it really, it's this level of feeling that we just can't even express the joy that we would have if others would come to know. But we need to start with why it's important and then move into how we do it so we can get to the place of excitement and blessing when others come to start knowing Jesus through us. Here's what I honestly believe is that Jesus wants to empower us as the next generation to reach lives and reach hearts. He wants us to reach friends and families and co-workers. Right? He wants us to reach nations and missions and a lot of different ways. But he is calling you, as he has called all of his followers throughout all of time, to share the good news of the message of the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's where we're, that's where we're going to be starting these discussions that we're going to be having following these lessons when we gather together on Zoom. Um, we really want to work towards that end of encouraging one another to then go out and begin sharing this message, uh, this life-changing message to other people. So I want to start tonight again with the foundation for sharing Jesus. What is the foundation for witnessing? I, I, th I think we all have an idea that like, yes, this is something that we know we should be doing. But the basis and the foundation of witnessing to like other people to God did not start in the Gospels after Jesus is leaving. So a lot of times we think of the Great Commission, right? Go and make disciples of all nations. And we see Jesus like before he ascends into heaven, we see that's his last command. I think that's a familiar verse that we all know, and it's one that's often used as like the reason why we witness. And it is a clear-cut uh, commission. It is a clear-cut encouragement and command by Jesus to his people that that's what we should be doing. So I'm not saying that that's not a part of the foundation, but that's not the whole extent of this. And really, it goes back way earlier, and this is something that is written throughout all of scripture, throughout all of the Bible that we see, that this isn't just something that, that took place when Jesus left. 
right? Witnessing to God is something that has taken place throughout all of Scripture. If you look at Psalm 145, starting in verse 4, this is what the psalmist writes. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. He says, I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. So notice what he says there. In, the psalmist says in verse 7, Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. And really that, that's what I wanted to start with, is looking at Psalm 145, a psalm written much before the time of Jesus, before he comes into play and gives that commandment to go into all nations and make disciples. But here we see that from the beginning of time, God has set apart a people to tell of his goodness, to tell of who he is, to tell of what it is that he does. Right, So witnessing is actually sharing the goodness of God. And witnessing is foundational. Right, Witnessing to the goodness of God is foundational to the people of God. And that's something we have to understand. This isn't something that is just like new for us today. God has called his people constantly throughout scripture to say, point others to me. Point the next generation to me. Point other nations to me. Because his ultimate plan, the plan that God has and the purpose he has for all people is to come to know him. Now, the, the, the sad and harsh reality is that not all will choose the, to accept the invitation to know him. Which is why we are called to go ahead and witness and share this good news with all people. Okay, So, witnessing, again points to the goodness of God and it's foundational to the people of God, right? So it's this pointing, not to ourselves, not to anything else here on this earth, but it's pointing to something greater than anything around us has to offer. And that's what God is telling his people to constantly do throughout all of scripture. Now, uh, in that little survey that we did, um, some of us mentioned that one of the reasons we felt like witnessing is difficult or we hesitate to witness is because people have made it seem more difficult than it should be. Or that they've kind of turned it into something that it's not. And, and kind of the end goal is kind of muddled with everything. Uh, but really sharing Jesus, sharing this story, is all about showing how he is the only option to true life. Okay, so we have to realize that there is nothing else that this is to accomplish other than to point people to Jesus. It's not about ourselves. It's not about our churches. It's not about any organization. It's not about any methods. This is about bringing people into the life-changing story that is offered to us only through Jesus Christ. So I want to move forward now. And, and, and I think like we all agree, this is something that we know we should be doing. Um, but... I think everyone or most people find this as something that is difficult to do, right? Like what are other people going to think? How are they going to receive this message? How are they going to perceive me and our relationship after this, right? What about all those other things that they're doing that like they seem so much more appealing than this message that I'm about to share with them. And so there's all these things that kind of tug at our hearts, and they kind of eat away at our minds a little bit. Like, I want to do this. I know I should be doing this. But, <laughs> but there are all these other factors that come into place. And I think that's a lot of times because we, whether it's, it's something that we've heard taught or it's something that we've, we've just taken upon ourselves, we make witnessing, we make sharing Jesus something that it's not. Right? We make it about us. And not about God. We make it about our reputation. And not God's reputation. See that's what, that's what really witnessing is. And there's, um, there's an, a definition that I really like. 
about witnessing. And it's not even like a biblical definition. I just looked it up online and it says witnessing is one who has personal knowledge of something. One who has personal knowledge of something. So it's not secondhand knowledge. It's not something that I read about. It's, it's something that I have actually experienced for myself. And that's what we're doing when we're sharing Jesus, when we're witnessing, right? It, it, it's not figuring out how to not make this awkward, right? The key to witnessing is first actually experiencing it for ourselves but then pointing people to what we have experienced in God. So we have to see that. In order for us to share the good news of life with Jesus, we need to experience it ourselves. And so that doesn't mean that every single day is going to be sunshine and butterflies. Right? Like, it's not meaning like you're always going to have a smile on your face. And, and because, oh, I've experienced Jesus, there's not a worry in the world. That's not what true Christianity looks like. It's not what the Bible portrays it as. What we have to realize is experiencing for ourselves is experiencing the life-changing goodness, grace, mercy, love, joy, the peace, the hope that only Jesus can offer to us. And really the purpose and meaning of all of life wrapped up in him. So if we don't experience freedom in Jesus ourselves, we're not going to see the benefit of leading others to Jesus, right? Like if I'm not getting that from my relationship with God, why would I want to point something, someone to that if they seem to be getting that from something else? There's this idea that you can't give what you don't have. And that's really where I want to look at a little bit just for these next few minutes. Like, If you do not have it, if you have not experienced Jesus and his life-changing goodness, you're not going to be able to give it to others. And not only won't you be able to give it to others, but you're not even going to see the need or the desire to give it to other people. So if you're not convinced yourself, you're not going to be able to convince other people. So the starting point for witnessing, the starting point for sharing Jesus, right? it's not about us, but we do have to look inward. Like what is the hesitation that I have to not go and share the good news that, that has been given to me? And really the starting point is what does my relationship with Jesus look like? Is my relationship with Jesus something secondary in my life? Or is it something that really truly matters to me? And I organize it and make my whole life revolve around that center of my relationship with Jesus. Another, another thought. Convinced people convince people. Okay? So if you yourself are convinced, others will take notice and they will begin to see that there is something different about you in the way in which you live. Right? There really are no lukewarm Christian witnesses who, who witness in power, who witness effectively. Because if you're timid, because you don't really know what's going on, or if you even believe it, other people aren't going to jump on board and see it as something worth following. So we're, we're quick, right? And this is something that I just want to look at for this moment. We're quick to look at other, other people's lives, right? Like we would love for someone else's life to be changed. We want them to come into a relationship with God. We want them to be saved. But we're really slow ourselves to surrender completely unto him. And then we wonder why we're nervous. We wonder why we hesitate. We wonder why these things are natural to us, even though they're commanded to us. And let me tell you, I'm not not talking only to you. I'm talking to my own heart right now. Like these are things that I still struggle with and deal with. But what Jesus wants us to see is that if we have him, and if we surrender ourselves to him, there's no other option than to share him. In 1 John chapter 1, I want to read verses 1 through 4. The Apostle John writes, that, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. 
The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. So here, John is really describing what true witnessing looks like. Like he's, he's describing what sharing Jesus really looks like. So John the Apostle here, he's writing against some false teachers who have this idea that are, they're saying, you know, Jesus was never really raised from the dead. And they, they were beginning to teach these things to the church. So John is coming in here to correct them, but not only to correct them. He wants them to know that he himself, along with others, witnessed the very work of Jesus. They experienced it for themselves. They said they have seen it. They testify to it. Their eyes have looked upon it. They touched it with their own hands. So, so what they're saying is this, is this isn't just some intellectual knowledge we're trying to pass to you. This is an experience that we have that has completely and radically altered our lives and brought us in alignment with God. And that is now something that we want to see happen with you. And that's really what we see throughout all of the world. There are two stories, right? There are two stories. There's a true story and there's a false story. And throughout all of scripture and throughout all of humanity, ever since man has sinned, we see that God is trying to bring people back into the true story. But oftentimes we exchange that for a false story. Now we live in a world, and we understand this, right? We live in a world that is filled with different stories, different ways. But, but Jesus wants us to see that there is only one way. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But here, we're, we're looking at when we're witnessing, like we see here in 1 John, when we're witnessing, we are sharing Jesus and we're telling people of that true and better story. We're actually inviting them into that. Right? In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you've heard this verse before. Luke writes of Jesus saying, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, so really what's going on here is Jesus is saying when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you're going to have the power to go and actually share this story. So this is nothing on our own doing. This is the work of Jesus in us pointing to God's reputation. Okay, so I just want to finish here with this last thought. Why do we need to share this news? Right, like what's the, what's the purpose of witnessing why do we need to share this? Can't we just share that like people need to be good? Right? Can't they just believe in God to some extent? Why do they need to have a, a relationship and follow Jesus and surrender to him? And again, like we live in this world with so many different options to life. More than ever before with the rise of technology and social media. And there's just so many things that are available to us. And honestly, there may be some of those options that you're weighing in your own mind right now. And sometimes we feel these doubts arise within us like, is this life worth it? Right? Should I give my all to this? Should I put all my eggs into this Jesus basket? Like, what if this doesn't pay off? What if this doesn't achieve the end result that I really maybe think I want? We have to see that. Jesus, he leads us to a full life and he is the only way. He is the only way to that full life. He is the only way to true life. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we have to see like there are countless options and there are things that you may even think that you want more than surrendering all to Jesus right now. But in the end, those things lead to death. <laughs> right? Like, like that, that's what scripture is very clear about. And it's not trying to put in scare tactics or make people fear, but it's just to give clarity as to there are always, there's always one true story, the way of Jesus, right? There's the narrow way, and then there's the broad gate. There's the broad way that many people are going to enter into. 
So we have to understand that Jesus is the one answer. But alongside of that, we also have to understand that Jesus invites all of us to come to him. And so that's the good news, is that while he is this exclusive message that there's only one way to true life, it doesn't only go to a certain people. He opens and extends this to all people. And that is why we share this good news, because it is for anyone. It is for the worst of the worst and those who think that they are the best of the best. So this message that we're sharing is, is bigger than ourselves. It's bigger than anything that we could do. But it's actually pointing to God's never changing nature. It's pointing to his love, his goodness. It's pointing to the life that only he can, he can give us. So witnessing, just to wrap it up here, witnessing is something that God's people are called to do. It's something that we're called to do. And it flows, right? So it's something we're called to do, but it flows out of our experience with him, of his love, of his life-changing ways that never fail and that never change. So I, I'm hoping that over these few weeks, I hope that was a, um, a decent foundation and introduction to where we're going to be going over uh, these next few weeks together. But over these few weeks, we, we're going to be learning to point people to Jesus, but we want to make this very personal and intentional. So what we're going to do now, um, there's just going to be a one minute timer that comes up on your screen. I'm going to ask if you're taking notes, uh, if you're writing some stuff down, or if not, just grab a piece of paper or write it down in your phone. And I want you to, to take a moment and think of four people, four people that you can intentionally pray for, specifically for these people, that they would come to know Jesus over this next year. And that you would make a resolution and say, I am going to pray these people and I'm going to eventually witness to these people so that they would come to know Jesus. I know right now that may seem like a huge task. And we're going to break that down and even talk through that together a little bit. But take this moment and just allow whoever God lays on your heart, your family, friends, right? Friends. Don't cheap out on this. There are friends that you have that need Jesus. Or your co-workers. Those sometimes maybe even strangers. And maybe that will come up throughout this year. But... We're just praying for opportunities to share the good news of Jesus. So take this minute and just allow God to stir your heart for this.